Hey, everybody, it's Sunday, two days before Election Day. Early voting ends today almost everywhere. Uh, if you cannot make it out today, I need you to make a plan to vote on Tuesday. I need you to make a plan that involves you bringing a spare battery for your phone, a water bottle, and some protein bars, because you may be waiting a long time. We're expecting big turnout in the swing states. I want to give you a quick overview of where I see the campaign right now. I just flipped off the first few minutes of Donald Trump's rally in Latitz, Pennsylvania, which is deep in Amish country. And so this is probably one of the reddest places he could possibly go. Um, but man, it's terrible. This now has the feeling of the way you want a campaign to end. One candidate is depressed, a diminished, weak. He, we've kind of inverted something here. In 2016, Donald Trump was very successful at turning Hillary Clinton and framing her image and saying she was sick, she was weak, she was dying, she was old, she couldn't get in and out of a car. All those things framed up at, at Hillary physically to start with. And then he was framing her as even her own party doesn't like her. Democrats aren't behind her. You know, there was no enthusiasm for her. She's losing Republican or Democrats over to the Republicans. Independents are going away. So he made this physical case about her. He made this political case about her. And it was pretty successful. And when Jim Comey uh, dropped his little nuclear bomb, it changed the chemistry. The, 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 the formula was there all but for one final catalyst. And that, that final catalyst came from Jim Comey and that, and that unbelievable moment. Right. But let's not relitigate 16. Donald Trump is now that candidate. He is now the candidate he described. He's old. He's weak. He's sick. He's dying. Now, I'm not saying she was all those things, folks. That was the description he laid on her. But what are you seeing from Trump? You've got him off the rails at every at every one of his little itty bitty rallies now. And they are small. They're 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 not, you know, 25,000, 30,000 people there. Seven, eight hundred thousand, one hundred, two thousand people, maybe. You see him in every one of these things off the rails. On Friday night, we saw him filleting a microphone, which, I, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of shit in politics. I ain't never seen that before, as they say. Um, and he's weaker and, and more diminished at every one of these events. What do you see on Harris's side? Massive rallies, massive field operations, massive turnout operations. I've been talking to people I've talked to four separate people today, uh, texted back and forth with them today, who are working doors in Pennsylvania, and it is blowing the they're they're blowing the doors off. They're going to knock a million doors today. Today, they are blowing the doors off. They're doing everything right. Okay, now two polls I want to talk to you about really quickly that are also part of this enthusiasm you're seeing on the Democratic side of the equation. One, Selzer, you heard about it last night. It's been a big deal. That poll is such a thing right now for a really simple reason. Iowa is where Trump should be. He should be romping in Iowa. He should be 15, 12 points ahead in Iowa. She's three points up on him. If she's three points up on him there, that's the apocalypse. And it comes from Selzer, the most reliable pollster in Iowa, who over the last 30 years of me being involved in politics, she hits it over and over again, right on the money, okay? She calls it almost every single time within a point or two. So if if she's three points up in Iowa, what, where would you think another state could be a really big nuclear bomb going off? Well, that would be Ohio, where this morning she's only three points back on Trump in the Miami University poll in Ohio. Look, we're not going to win Ohio, Okay. That is a red, 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 red state. It's Alabama with more coal mines. It is a red, red, red state. But the fact that we're three points back instead of 10 or seven, that's a big deal. What we're seeing, especially in the upper Midwest, is the collapse of Trumpism. Michigan and Wisconsin are looking increasingly good in everybody's numbers, not just ours. Our numbers there are looking increasingly good. We want to run it through the tape. We want to push it to the very end, but those numbers are looking good. Pennsylvania, the early vote, over 400,000 early votes in the bank for Harris, a huge new number of young female registrants to vote. And by the way, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make a little point. These under 30 women who are registering to vote, 
they're not there for Donald Trump eating the dogs, eating the cats, or any of this other bullshit. They're there because the Dobbs decision is meaningfully putting their lives at risk. Okay? So Pennsylvania is uh, the early vote and the composition of the early vote is looking really good in Pennsylvania. Now, I want to caution you quickly about Pennsylvania before I move on to the next topic. On election night, they count their absentee and early vote ballots after live voting ends. The first numbers you will see out of Pennsylvania will likely show Trump with a meaningful lead. That is not the whole story. Early voting has been going on for several weeks in Pennsylvania. Once those numbers come into the pool, and that may not be till after midnight on Tuesday night, once those numbers come into the pool, uh, you are going to see a very different looking race. Um, so don't fall for the red mirage. Also, don't fall for Trump declaring victory on election night. Unless there's, again, something we're not seeing and that no one else in the entire political space is seeing. If it starts rolling up for Harris early, Trump's going to come out by 8, 830 and say, I've won everything. It's all fraud. Do not take the bait. Keep it. Keep Stay in line. Keep voting. If you're in line, stay in line, as they say. But it's going to be a big night. And don't fall for the red mirage. The red mirage always happens in these states that count absentees and inter absentees after they enter the, the live vote. So we feel very good about where things stand right now. The campaigns, again, he's ending in depressing, small, angry rallies in smaller and smaller venues and smaller and smaller towns. He's desperately been playing defense in North Carolina all weekend, which tells you a lot because if he can't win North Carolina, man, that even, and you know, we do run the, the blue wall and he can't win North Carolina, that's a real indicator. We're seeing in Nevada, the vote's closing up. It's still going to be tough. Arizona, I feel decent but not great about. I'd love to win both of those. I think we'll win at least one. Um, this is a, a the way you want to end it. You want to end on an upbeat note. Harris goes on SNL last night, has a great, lively, friendly performance. A lot of people are seeing her on TV for the first time because, God almighty, people don't pay attention until the end of campaigns. But overall, guys, we're in a really good position right now. We are we are as, in as good a position as you can be going into an election like this. Um, the, the the polling stack of of poly market and Kalshi and these other betting markets that for weeks have shown Trump like a 65 35 bet are now tied or Harris is ahead. That's caused a freak out on the right. Peter Thiel, of course, is a is a a part owner of poly market from what we've seen reported and so we believed all along that that was there to, to give the magas a non-polling in piece of indicia they could say oh no matter what the polls say we're this far ahead we're massively ahead we're going to win everything that's to frame up the big lie that comes after the election anyway listen go vote today if your state still allows early voting it's sunday it is now 1249 on the East Coast. And if you can go vote today, please go vote today. Please. It will save you a lot of hassle and time and, and agony on Tuesday. Keep watching what Trump says and does for the rest of the weekend as he goes to these rallies. I am I am told the Latitz rally right now that is going on is completely off the rails. And I can only tell you that as he gets more and more exhausted and more and more punchy, you will see more and more of the real Trump. And that is a, a, a thing that all, most of all of you who listen or watch this will already know what the real Trump is. You'll already understand who he is. But exhaustion tells you a lot about people, about who they really are. Trump is exhausted right now. He is breaking down. He is not healthy. He's not good. Watch what happens in these last few rallies as he starts to say what's really on his mind. It's not going to be pretty. And it's going to tell you one more time that your vote for Kamala Harris was the right vote. You did the right thing. Thanks again, folks. We will talk to you on tomorrow.